Hello Grade 7 learners, your science teacher welcome you all to another interesting video lesson for this week. This is Teacher Mildred. Today is another great day as we are going to explore, discover, and learn new exciting things in this lesson. Just a few reminders. 1. Please settle down comfortably. 2. Have yourself focused and ready for our lesson. 3. Prepare your science quarter 2 module together with your pen, paper, and notebook. And now, let's have this activity and how far you've learned from our previous lesson. This can be used during our science laboratory experiment. The title of our activity number 1, Laboratory Apparatus. Directions. Fill out the table with the names of laboratory equipment. The first letter of the equipment should correspond to the letter assigned to that box. It is not necessary to fill out all of the boxes. So, I will give you now 3 minutes to answer your activity. Timer starts now. Alright, let's have your answers. Letter A, alcohol lump. Letter B, Baker Vansin Burner. Letter C, Crossable Tongs, Crossable Wheat Cover, Clay Triangle. Letter D, Dropper. Letter E, Erlen Mayer Flask, Evaporating Dish. Letter F, Florence Flask, Funnel. Letter G, Graduated Cylinder. Letter H, No Instrument Assigned to This Letter. Letter I, Iron Wing, Iron Plump, Iron Stand. Letter J, K, L. No instrument assigned to these letters. Letter M, microscope, magnifying glass, medicine dropper, mortal and pistol. Letter N and O, no instrument assigned to these letters. Letter P, pipettes, petri dish. Letter Q, no instrument assigned to this letter. Letter R, rubber stopper. Letter S, spatula, spring scale, steering rod. Letter T, test tube, test tube rack. Test tube brush, test tube holder, tripod, thermometer. Letter U, no instrument assigned to this letter. Letter V, vials, volumetric glass. The letter W, wire gauze, watch glass, watch bottle, water throw. Letter X, Y, and Z, no instrument assigned to this letter. So, all of your answers are all correct. Very good. Before we were going to start our lesson, I have here some pictures. You are going to identify what object is shown in the picture. I will going to give you one minute to answer. Are you ready, class? Okay, let's start. So what is in the first picture? Correct, that is an elephant. How about the second picture? Alright, that is a plant. And for the third picture? You are correct. That is an onion skin. And for the fourth picture? Correct. That is an ant colony. And for the last picture? Alright. That is a red blood cell. Some of the pictures can be identified easily because they are big enough to see with our naked eye. But some are too small that we cannot able to see them with our both eyes. So scientists have developed an instrument that can be used to see a tiny object. So for now, try to guess out of what kind of instruments is shown for our 4 picks one word. Timer starts now. Very good! That is a microscope. The science of investigating very tiny organisms and small objects using the microscope is called microscopy, which is the title of our topic for today. So, before anything else, let's have first our objectives. 
Objective number one, identify the different parts of the microscope and their functions. Objective number two, demonstrate the proper use of the microscope. Objective number three, value the importance of the microscope. Now, are you ready to learn? So, what are you waiting for? Let's explore now the parts and function of a compound microscope and how it is important to all of us. The branch of science that deals with the study of life, both plants and animals, that is known as biology. One of the tools that the scientists use to study life is a microscope. With the invention of the microscope, we are able to understand life even better. But what is a microscope? A microscope is a tool that is used to see organisms or objects that are too small to be seen by the naked eye. Microscope makes the small objects look bigger. Some of the tiny objects or organisms that can be seen using a microscope are the following. Plant cell, animal cell, and microorganisms like bacteria. To understand how the microscope works, we need to be familiar with these two terms. 1. Magnification 2. Resolution When we say magnification or magnifying power, it describes how much larger an object appears when viewed. Example, an onion cell. Observe the structure of an onion cell, pointed arrow as you can see, it is very small. If you want to see it better, you can increase its magnification to see the structure better. Next is the resolution or resolving power. It is the capacity of the microscope to distinguish small gaps between two separate points which human cannot distinguish. It is used to see finer details of an object. Example, the sample shows a comparison between a low resolution and a high resolution. A high-resolution image shows a finer details of a plant cell. So there are different types of a microscope. But for this lesson, we are going to focus on the compound microscope. Compound microscope. It is an optical microscope that uses visible light to form an image. It uses glass lenses to magnify and resolve images. But why is it called a compound microscope? This kind of microscope is called compound microscope because it uses two or more double convex lenses to magnify the objects. These lenses can be found on the eyepiece and objectives of a compound microscope. A compound microscope comprises the three major parts based on their functions. 1. Magnifying parts 2. Illuminating parts 3. Mechanical parts. Let's first talk about the magnifying parts of the compound microscope. The magnifying parts of a compound microscope makes the specimen look bigger. A specimen is a part or a sample of any material for study or examination under the microscope. The specimens should be small and thin for the light to pass through them. First magnifying parts is the eyepiece or the ocular lens. This is the lens located at the top of the microscope. This is where the viewer looks and sees the magnified image of the specimen. The eyepiece or ocular lens also magnifies the image of the specimen. Its standard magnification is 10 times. The image seen on the ocular lens is inverted. The image is inverted because it goes through two lens systems and because of the reflection of light rays. Next is the objective lenses. Just like the eyepiece, its job is to magnify specimen under observation. These are the major lenses used for specimen visualization and magnification. Most compound microscopes have three objectives. Some have four. The typical objective lenses are the following. First, low power objectives. It has a magnification power of 10 times. It is used to see the general outline of the specimen. Second, 
high power objective. It has a magnification power of 40 times. It's used to view structures from a larger perspective. Third, oil immersion objective. It has the magnification power of 100 times. It is the longest objective used to view bacteria, very small protists, and fungi. It requires the use of special oil such as quality cedar wood oil. Some microscope has a scanner objective. It has the magnification power of 5 times. It is the shortest objective. Remember, the magnification of a specimen can be calculated by multiplying the number found in the eyepiece with the number found in the objective being used. So if the specimen is viewed using the 10 times objectives and a 10 times eyepiece, it will be magnified 100 times. Next are the illuminating parts. The word illuminate means to give light. Therefore, these are the parts of the microscope that supply and regulate light towards the specimen. First is the mirror. It reflects light from an external light source through the bottom of the stage which illuminates the specimen. The light source can be natural like sunlight or artificial from a lamp. Next, Irish diaphragm. It is located under the stage this part controls the amount of light that reaches the specimen. This is important because it provides enough light in viewing the specimen. The third one is the condenser. It is located under the microscope. This part collects and focuses the light from the mirror to the specimen. Now, let's explore the mechanical parts of the microscope. These parts are used for support and adjusting the different parts of the microscope. First one is the body tube. It holds the eyepiece lens and connects it to the objective lenses. Second, revolving nose piece. It holds the different objectives, lenses, and facilitates the changing of objectives. It is the parts that you turn to change the objective lens you want to use. 3. Adjusting knob. These are used to focus the microscope. There are two types of adjusting knob. One, coarse adjustment knob. Two, fine adjustment knob. Coarse adjustment knob is the bigger adjusting knob. It moves the body tube and low pressure lens closer or farther away from the stage to view the image of the specimen. Find adjustment knob. It is the smaller adjusting knob. It is used to bring the specimen into focus to show clearly the detailed parts of the specimen. 4. Stage. It is the flat surface where the mounted slide is placed. Slide is where the specimen is placed for observation. 5. Stage clips. It holds the specimen in place. 6. Arm and base. The arm serves as the handle of the microscope in carrying it. Base serves as the support of the whole microscope. When transferring the microscope from one place to another, we use our both hands in holding the arm and the base. 7. Inclination joint. It allows the user to tilt the microscope for more comfortable viewing, especially when you are in the sitting position. However, you must only tilt the microscope when you are working with a dry specimen. And those are the different parts of a compound microscope and its functions together on the how we manipulate and demonstrate the importance of each part. The microscope has become an important investigation tool in studying objects and organisms around us, knowing its parts as well as the proper manipulation and care will make our study of science effective, interesting, and meaningful. So for now, let's have this activity number two. Direction 
label each part of the microscope. Rubrics are given below. Accuracy of the content, 5 points. Organization and coherence of idea, 5 points. Clarity of message, 5 points. Completeness, 5 points. A total of 20 points. I will going to give you 5 minutes to answer the activity. Timer starts now. All right, now let's have your answers. Did you get the correct answers? Very good. All of your answers are correct. So, for our practical application together with the subject integration, coronavirus is responsible for the pandemic we are facing. Viruses are minute organisms that attract a healthy living cells and multiply inside it causing a healthy cell to die. How do you think scientists observe or study this kind of virus? So, the next video clip's presentation will going to support and prove on how microscope plays an important role in identifying and discovering how microorganism works. You might recognize it by now. This is SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. A single cell is just 120 nanometers in diameter. Here it is at 12 million times magnification, a microscopic virus that's turned the world upside down. Each cell of the virus is made up of several parts. On the outside, it's covered in nodules topped with distinctive protein spikes. It's these spikes that give the coronavirus family its name. In Latin, corona means crown, see? And the name COVID-19 simply means coronavirus disease of 2019. The corona protrudes from the glycoprotein membrane, an envelope of lipid molecules that coat the virus cell's body. This fatty layer of skin is very delicate and it falls apart when it meets soap. And that's why for now soap is our best weapon against the virus and why you should take your time washing your hands. After 20 seconds, soap penetrates the grease and grime on our hands enough to rip the virus membrane apart, killing it. Under that oily skin is where the real trouble lies. Inside each cell is a small sample of RNA, ribonucleic acid. It carries the virus's genetic code and allows it to multiply, leading to infection. But how does the viral RNA get into our bodies? It comes back to those protein spikes. After the virus has entered the human body, it uses those spikes to attach itself to a healthy cell in the respiratory system. Once that's done, the viral RNA is released and the takeover begins. The cell reads the viral RNA and makes proteins that keep our body's immune systems suppressed. That allows the virus to reproduce and multiply, killing healthy cells and potentially causing lifelong damage or death. So how do we beat this disease? Again, it's all to do with those protein spikes. They might be its strength, but scientists think they might also be its weakness. They now know its genetic code and can recreate it. A trial that began in Seattle is injecting people with that protein. Because it doesn't contain the viral RNA, they believe it's harmless, but it can teach the body how to make antibodies against the protein spikes. Those antibodies would cover the spikes, incapacitating the virus and prevent it from piercing healthy cells. That's the hope. It's just one of about 30 trials underway around the world right now. But most researchers agree a vaccine is still 12 to 18 months away. For now, the best way to avoid becoming infected is to wash your hands, avoid touching your face, and keep practicing physical distancing. To evaluate your learning and how well you understand the lesson, you are going to answer the activity number three. This is entitled, Matching Parts and Functions. You are going to match the parts of the microscope in the column A to its functions found in the column B. I will going to give you five minutes to answer the activity. Timer starts now.
Alright, these are the correct answers. Eyepiece, letter L. Body tube, letter G. Revolving nose piece, letter M. Objective lenses, letter K. Mirror, letter F. Arm, letter J. Diaphragm, letter H. Base, letter I. Stage, letter A. Stage clips, letter B. Horse adjustment knob, letter C. Fine adjustment knob, letter D. Inclination joint, letter E. Are your answers are all correct? Good job! Okay, for your assessment, you are going to identify and write the names of the following scientists who contributed to the field of microscopy and their respective discoveries. This will be passed next week. So, that's all for today. See you next meeting. Bye-bye!